just kill all the sick people. Kill all the old people. Kill the children that are... Mm, Today I thought that we could talk about artificial intelligence and transhumanism. It seems as though everyone is talking about AI recently. Artificial intelligence and transhumanism, those go hand in hand. Um, there's the idea that artificial intelligence will get so powerful that it will make sense to, I guess, bind it with human consciousness to blend these two together and that we will make robots and we will upload people's consciousness can you tell that it's late at night and i'm quite tired <laughs> oh, la, la. hello artificial intelligence and transhumanism go hand in hand on the one hand you have the people who are talking about whether artificial intelligence will become so powerful that it will end up ruling over us. Hello. And on the other hand, you have the transhumanists. Hello. To believe that the only way for humans to survive this is to merge with artificial intelligence. And then you have the people who are terrified of death and they would like to upload their consciousness to a computer so that they can then be embodied into an android robot of some kind so that they can live forever. Ooh, there's madness all around in all of these topics. Hello. But let's narrow it down to some of the more pressing concerns that I think we should be discussing at a societal level. One of the many problems that I see with this idea of artificial intelligence and um, Computers as decision makers, I suppose, over human affairs. We already have minds that are stripped of emotion. We call these psychopaths. And we already have evidence for what kind of decision making that, that these intelligent minds that process information very well without the burden of emotions, we already know how disastrous they are for society. Bing, 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 bing. They're more likely to commit crimes and have no remorse. They can kill if they feel that the reason is valid to them without any guilt and with less inhibition because they don't have the negative emotions that non-psychopaths have uh, around the, the idea of, of taking someone else's life, of murder. And um, we see them in business where they thrive and do well and fuck over everybody else, uh, society, the environment, the poor, just, and it's all about their own interests, their corporate interests, making money, making money for themselves or for their business, winning, being the best at any cost. They will destroy civilization as long as they're making money doing it. And we are seeing that all around us. So we already know what happens when you have an intelligent mind without emotion. Bing, bing. Bong, bong, bing, 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 bong, bong, bing, 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 bong, bong, bing, 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 bong, bong, bing, bing, bing. One of the, I don't know if I would call it a problem, contributing factor, concern that I think we should discuss is that the people who are making decisions about how artificial intelligence is being developed, for what capacities, purposes, for what tools, industries, and how it's being designed are often, not always, often people who themselves have a lower sentimentality, uh, lower emotional responses than the average person. And, and I think that if we continue to ignore that, there's going to be a very high cost to pay for our willful ignorance. Reason alone. We live in a materialist reductionist 
nihilistic kind of culture society the world over actually at the moment we're in a very strange place i think in most societies that are working on artificial intelligence and we have really bought into the idea that reason alone is always superior to reason that's been corrupted or tainted or weakened or softened by emotional considerations. And that's just not true. That's just wrong. And we don't really challenge that because we're taught that to challenge it is to admit that you're on the side of sentimentality, which means that you're weak, that you're soft, that you're less intelligent, that you're a woman, a sissy, girly. I don't think that it's this whole anti-feminist thing. I don't even want to go there. I don't know why I brought that up. But the point of it is that there's this idea that if you bring into the equation this idea of the importance of emotion, that somehow that's silly and ridiculous. And of course, reason is better and reason is always going to be more accurate and produce a better result. But we, we know that's not true. There are a lot of situations in which it makes more sense to just kill off the humans than to provide for them. It often doesn't make sense to do things that are right. I also had a pleasant day. I went working and shopping. be human to increase suffering if you tell the computer reduce suffering well suffering can be good it can lead to growth Ooh, there's madness all around in all of these topics it can lead to that bitter sweetness that allows for the sweetness you never fall in love without some suffering and if you don't suffer at all in a love relationship, then either you're not invested in it or it's an infatuation, it's not love, or it's not reciprocated, it's just a fantasy. You suffer when you know your loved one is in pain. You suffer for them, you have this empathetic suffering. We suffer to achieve what we want. You go without sleep, you work hard, you diet, you suffer hunger in order to get a better job, to get a degree, to get a better boyfriend, to whatever it is that you're trying really hard to get, it usually involves suffering and, and we're okay with that. And in fact, sometimes we use suffering as a marker of value. Because we've suffered, then that which we've achieved is that much more meaningful. And so to deprive us of suffering entirely also deprives of, a, of a, a certain amount of value or marker of value. Ooh, there's madness all around in all of these topics. That's what we have to offer. That's our greatest sacrifice. To say to a loved one or to say to society, I will suffer for you. I will suffer to make your life better. That is a gift. Firefighters who go into a burning building and, and risk getting burned and, and suffer, um, they do that to help their community. They do that to save children in, in, in a house that's burning down. And we value that and we value that sacrifice. So this idea that reason alone can make better decisions than, than decisions that incorporate sentimentality, that is wrong. I'll come up with more examples, but I'm sure you can as well. And feel free to do so in the comments down below and then we can kind of see, can we come up with strong arguments for situations in which uh, a reason-based solution that a, an artificial intelligence would make is always necessarily going to be the wrong choice. If a child is sick, is it better to kill the child to prevent it from suffering? If someone is in a terrible accident and they lose 
the ability to use their legs. Well, will the computer decide that A, they will no longer be able to contribute enough to society to justify their continued existence and the expenses to society that come with that while they're in their recovery period? Will the computer decide that they themselves can't have the quality of life, therefore there's no reason for them to continue suffering? These are decisions that can't be made by a machine because they can't even really be made by one human for another. A lot of choices don't have a right or wrong answer. And so everyone has to make those kinds of choices for themselves. And we respect that other people might make a different choice in that same situation. And, and we can't judge that because we know if someone is deathly ill and they're in pain and they're suffering, maybe they have stomach cancer, and you can choose to euthanize them or allow them to live in pain for another a year. Well, it's not up to you to make that choice for them. It's up to them. And if they want to live out the rest of their natural life and suffer immensely because they feel that that suffering is part of being human or it's making up for some of the sins they've committed in life, some kind of karmic redemption opportunity, or they just want to cling to these last moments of, of being here, being with people that they love and, and having human interactions, and they think that's worth the pain they're suffering. That's their choice. If on the other hand, they don't, and they just want to die before the pain gets worse or they feel like they've accomplished what they have been put here to accomplish, whatever their belief system is, well, then that's their choice. And, and I think that these are the kind of decisions that even a human being can't make in place of another human being. And so to expect a, a machine that has no emotions, a, a computer, artificial intelligence that is emotionless, to make a better choice, that's insane. This ridiculous. The artificial intelligence lacks the capacity required to even understand the complex considerations that are involved in that kind of a choice. It, it can't be trusted to make choices like that. And if you're using an artificial intelligence to manage your hospital budget, then it's going to make choices about those kinds of situations. And if you put psychopaths in charge of your hospital budgets, you're gonna see the same kind of decision-making where all that matters is the cost. And, and we already know that we're not comfortable with that as the model. We're already resisting that and rebelling against that because we know it's wrong that it's not about cost. If it's about cost, then just kill all the sick people. Kill all the old people. Kill the children that are not 100% average because they're probably gonna end up being some kind of cost to society greater than what they're going to contribute. If they're slightly below average, their contribution might be slightly below average and the cost to society might be slightly above average in that case. So may as well just kill them all. Kill all the old people, kill all the sick people, kill all the slow people. That's cost effective. Is that the kind of society that we want to live in? Well, clearly no, because what happens is as you kill off the lower than average people, then the average increases because the average is the score of everyone divided by the number of people. And so if you get rid of all the low scoring people, then you take the score of everyone that's left, you divide that by the number of people that are left and your average now is, is higher. And so then you're going to have to get rid of all the new below average because your average has increased. So all the people who are below the new average, you're gonna to have to get rid of them when you get rid of them, then you recalculate your average. And so any artificial intelligence 
would necessarily do that. If you're an artificial intelligence, then you're not going to calculate an average for a data set and then have the data set changed and then keep using that old average that is no longer actually an average of the current data set. If you're going to update the average, it, it doesn't make sense not to from that perspective. But when you're dealing with human affairs, it doesn't make sense to not incorporate the complexities that lie outside the realm of quantifiable data. That's a topic for another video though, the quantitative data versus the qualitative data. I have a lot to say about that. <laughs> and so that's something that we will talk about later. <laughs>